just while we're waiting, I'm going to finish this. I'll pop the wire button on. This. I've got my cameras on. I do. Just chop this while we're waiting. Oh, she's slow. It's not loading. I'm frozen. I'm frozen in time. Am I? I can't see I'm live. How come you can see and I can't? Oh, that's going to throw me. If if you can see we're live and I can't see we're live. I'm going to have to look across your shoulder. Oh, there we are. What is going on? It's my computer. It doesn't want to. Do I push refresh? Don't do that. Why not? I just did. Now we're good. I'm so glad we didn't say anything wrong or any naughty words. Particularly when I did remember to turn the sound on for the first time ever. Wait, how can there how can there be comments already? How can you possibly you're all telling me we're live, aren't you? That's that's why. Good afternoon, everybody. Um I'm still cutting it out. Did you see that? I'm still I'm still on it. Um, I haven't done my homework. I've done a little bit of my homework. What's my excuse? Oh yeah, um, yesterday we were very busy. It was my birthday. I've never told anyone through sort of work it's my birthday before and this year just got out. So I thought, why not? Why not? But thank you everyone for your beautiful wishes. Had a good day. It was really good. Hello Caroline and Robin. Hello Jenny and Flynn. Hello. Good to see you. Um, hello Lorraine and Sharon. Popped your bags sort of, you know, in the special spot today, Sharon, with uh, Michelle Fisher, who dropped hers off. Oh, we want to talk about Michelle Fisher. She's now own, uh, known as, what is she known? Muffin Michelle? Would that be right, Steve? Sorry? Michelle? Dropped off muffins this morning with yes, her bags did. that I think would be illegal in at least 10 states in America. They were just... It's a bribe. It was, a, it was a bribe. Well, she can try and bribe me, but I'm not the judge this year, so that's okay. Hello, Joan. Did we have to tell Joan anything? Uh, Joan, we sent out your order today. Yes, we sent your order out today, Joan, with your uh, charms that you rang me yesterday with poor reception when I was going to see Mum and Dad. Uh, they have gone out, and for everyone else waiting for the cat charms, so Steve. He's waiting for the photos too. We nearly got there today after doing all the orders and I had to dash home. So um, they will happen. I've got them all here. It's going to happen. And hey, Flick. Oh, you just finished making a bag at the pocket tote. And Flick says, hi, Steve. Hi, Flick. <laughs> Hello, Pauline. Um, Melanie, I, did, I didn't laugh at your message, but I'm so glad you've got the hang of the charm purses now. Oh, you love the background? Good. I'm glad. For those that watched last night, it's a bit of a groundhog day, but I decided to leave it. I decided to leave it all up for today. Um, Judy's here. Marie's here. Wendy's. Hello, Wendy. Wendy, have you been here before? Hello. Great to be with you. Excited. I'm trying to look like spring Felicity and what goes with spring? I'm trying not to sneeze. So um, for those that watched last night, Ah, oh, thanks, Barb. Yeah, we'll have another go and see if it wasn't a fluke tonight and do another one. Um, 
I brought in because it was wattle day yesterday, so I did the whole the stand, you know, in the wattle colours. Forgot about Mark's bag, so I've got it in today. Um, did the whole stand. I had a big bunch of floribunda acacia, acacia floribunda. It and it was really warm, and I popped it in here, and we walked in to do the show. Oh, I can't do up close and personal with wattle, so it was like. Here, everybody, this is what an acacia looks like if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and handed it to Rob really quick because the smell was... Uh, it actually doesn't make me sneeze. Um, it makes me nauseous. And uh, that... And it, it's a genetic thing. Um, Aunty Ruth is exactly the same. His birthday's tomorrow. It's exactly the same. I remember her when I was little being literally ill in bed because the neighbours had jasmine on their side fence and for most people it's the most beautiful smell for me I have to walk 10 metres at the moment to the right when I go for a walk in the morning because there's one on the fence what? I had uni today <gasps> Stephen! Did you miss uni? Yeah That happens when you do uni online Do you get your days wrong? Yeah I thought I had Do you need to go and sit online somewhere now? No, I just finished. Uh oh. I've Steve wagged uni. I thought it was on Friday. Can you watch it later? No. Hmm. I'll stress about that later. Hello, Christine and Caroline. Um, good afternoon. Kathy, Helen, um, Carol, have you been here before as well? Karen, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, thank you very much, Carol. I did have a good day yesterday. Oh, emojis, emojis. Laurel is here too. Do you need to go and stress Steve and ring a friend? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Floria. You're not supposed to put the family business first. Just give me a yelp. Children. Hey, Meg. Oh, big loves to you too. Oh, you know, can't wait. Um, Margaret Upston has bought the book on the silo trail. And we're going to use that as our template when we go on the road next year to visit local communities and quilters in Victoria at least. Hello Carol, um, oh, you're all here. I'm going to get started because I could just spend the whole day trolling through and feeling the love and saying hello to everyone. Hello Trish, you know I feel like some of you haven't been here before so I'm now nervous and I will try and be all very professional get things done now I'm in trouble am I I am I am because I have not finished the makeup purse look look so um, the logistics of running a studio from home and one from work is the simplest the simplest of things hi Annie Ruth the simplest things get left at work including oh sorry you don't need to see that the zipper foot, the zipper foot for my 475. So it is now here, which means I can do the bag because I couldn't do the bags. I didn't have the zip foot. Yes, I know what you're all saying, Lisa. Why didn't you just use an open toe foot and put your needle all the way to the left? Yeah, well, I thought of that, didn't I? After I panicked over the foot. Um, so I still need to finish this, but uh, Steve tells me. If I don't hurry up, all the kits will be gone because I think he's only got three or four left. But this is this is going to be kind of my I think this is going to be my personal favourite. I think so. I will uh, get this done now. I'm just looking at my looking at my phone. We have phone issues at the moment. There's not an issue if I answer the phone quick enough, which I can't do now. But our phone got set up while they were doing MBN work to divert to my mobile which was all very lovely we can't undivert it and the message bank systems are separate from the ones that are at the warehouse and the ones that are here so I can't when people ring me it doesn't go to message bank so if you are trying to ring us it's just me today and Steve and we're at home at the moment filming doing this with you so I will be sure to try and ring back all the calls that I miss um, afterwards. But if you are trying to get us, that's why. So it's a little bit of a, you know, we're on the help desk line with Optus a fair bit at the moment. Anyway, this is, so we've got four kits up for the makeup purse, uh, which is this little guy. So if you wanted to grab, so this we're doing these colours instead of these ones. So I think there's, there's I think Steve said there's three left. Oh, look, you can see there's blue. 
behind the props. Heavens, that's heavy. It's not a stapler. Oh, it's a punch. Have you all got these? Isn't that, that is a lethal weapon right there. It's a super sharp blade. It's really good. They're really good for punching out um, felt and fabric and cork. That's my excuse. I own three. Stay. Okay. So um, the quilt, also the quilt behind me, if you didn't, last night, thinking, what was last night? This two weeks I'm hosting the Love and Hugs Facebook page. And Love and Hugs from Australia, Stitch Along, is this huge group that Natalie Bird set up with 17, I thought it was 16, it's actually 17 Australian designers. You can apply to be, to be invited into the group. So if you go on, you do a question and then you're invited in and then you can watch. So there's heaps of, heaps of girls doing lots of things over the, up until Christmas. And then if you scroll back through other things, you'll find lots of little stitcheries and things like this, this little one was the one that I did. So it's so nice at the moment because I can see lots of, got your legs, Dave. <laughs> I've got your legs. Um, there's lots of girls finishing off quilts at the moment. We did a Christmas in July theme. So there's lots of girls finishing off their quilts at the moment that have got this little design in and lots of different ones from all the other girls that joined in. So you can join up that and I'm doing one, it was 8 o'clock last night, but then afterwards if you miss it, we're putting them up on the YouTube, Lisa Chandler YouTube channel anyway, so you can watch them afterwards. But you can join the group and watch it live. I think I think it's a great group and it's just so inspirational. There's 17 and a half thousand members, so you're gonna to get to see a lot of stitcheries and works from girls all over the world. All over the world. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this aside. Um, we had notes for people, Steve. Hello Sally, good to see you. Yvonne's here too. Pat's here, everyone's here. Um, we have notes from the news desk. Ah, Barb. Barb Clifford. Barb Clifford, yeah. I don't know if Barb's here yet, but if not, she'll watch later. So, uh, Barb, we got your note. I'm sending her an email now. Steve's sending you an email right now, and we're sending you, before we look at your thread or any further, we're sending you a replacement cartridge for it to see if that works for you. And Nichols, if you are watching, stunning, stunning quilt, and I need to find a spot to share it. Anne has just finished her first, and it's not little, huge quilt on her Q16, and I'm very, very impressed because, of course, it's locked down. I can't get into, into her home to show her how to use it. I don't need to. She's got it all under control. So, um, yeah. Libby's got hers as well, and I'm helping Lib out day by day with hers and uh, this set is going to become a Benina display area tomorrow. I'm going to start doing some filming on orientation for all of the Beninas, which will be really, really good. Um, Faye, if you are watching as well, guidance on red and green shadow play. I'm still to do that for you, but of course, oh no, I did do that for you. And there was a green that I wanted we didn't have in stock, so I ordered it and Steve's uploaded stock onto the website today. So I will let you know what the colors are. Um, today or tomorrow. I think I think that's my homework. All right. So the other thing that I said I would get done um, today, which I did, was get that book cover pattern up on the website as a as a paid download. So that means now that if you want to make one and you want to make one now, you don't have to wait for us to post you out a pattern anymore. You um, can just pay for it and you get a little link and it will allow you to download and print out the pattern. Sorry, I gave my house a heart attack then. It's the old one. You can print it out. So this is the this is the pattern that we've now got up for you on the website. And someone someone had trouble, didn't they Steve, finding where to download it or something happened and we just sent them the link. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So if you haven't done a download before, depending on your computer and the way it's been set up, and let's face it, folks, we don't always know what's been set up for us. I am definitely one of those people. Hola, feel the father. Hello, Maria and Sofia. Oh, goodness, I owe you things as well. Um, okay, 
Sorry, I've just had a, I've just had a moment. Hello, Carleen and Jeanette. Good to see you. Um, I'm coming back to the field of father story in a minute. This is this is the book and this is the book cover. So what I was saying is is that your computer is all set up different ways. Based on how it's been set up, when you buy a download pattern, it will download either onto the desk, what's called the desktop on your computer, anywhere else it may go, Steve. That's pretty much it. When you download a pattern, does it go onto your desktop? So you'll be provided with a link via your email as well as the after you check out your order, um, and then that'll take you to a separate web page which will enable it to download onto your computer and it'll most likely end up in your downloads folder. Oh, so we've all got it. Yeah, we do. We have download photos, download folders, don't we? Yep. And they're near where the photo folder is. Yeah. On mine, it's in desktop. Um, yeah. If you. Anyway, oh, it varies. Ask a kid. If you don't understand, <laughs> yeah. just ask a grandchild. Ask a younger person. But it just downloads, so you can grab it really quick and go. So that's what's up there now. So we've got this one done. You can see there's the book. I made the cover up for the photo. It's got little flaps. There's still bits of thread hanging off. Hang on. Um, so I made it up. It literally took five minutes and that is not an exaggeration to make that cover. So fast. They're up, They're up now. Yeah, too. thanks. And then I set it on a log and took the photo and there it is. So this allows you to make a book cover with this little table in any size that you want. So I'm, I've got another one here I'm going to show you. And then the other one we put up because yesterday was Waffle Day. Hello Ruthie Bed. So we did a revamp and a download pattern as well for the Wattle book bag, which if you do a little flashback was probably about three years ago uh, at the Australian textile exhibition we had the botanical bag challenge and Emma very kindly stitched that out for me. I'm going to show you this in a little bit more detail in a minute. Just a quick recap on what we did last night if you missed it. Um, Newsflash said Steve says finally 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 we have uploaded the trinkets the trinkets sorry little trinket boxes with Melba in them. Are they in the giftware section? Boss? Yes. Oh. I'll put them in the giftware section. They will be now in the giftware section. That's exciting, Steve. It's just instant. I love the instant bit. Scary, but good. So the the Waddle Book pattern has this in it. Now, those of you who've been around with me for a long time may recognise this. This was the, the original sketch. You can see that. The original sketch design that I did for my wattle fabric that we had. It was a tonal and we had it in yellow and bright green and rust and it was rather yummy and I've got pieces of it and I'm just deliberating at the moment what we're going to do. But I've used, I did use some of it in here so there's a wash, that was one of them. Anyway, so this is the design from the fabric in there. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the other thing I want to do for you as well, there's only two of them, where are the other two? Give me a tick, give me a tick, they're not under there. Ah, uh, there's another one. I want you, um, I brought these up last night kind of just like to show off to the girls up there, Northern Hemisphere, if they haven't seen my fabrics before. I brought out these folders and these are the sample folders or the cards that we send out to shops around Australia and then very soon into America and the UK of all of my fabrics. So when we bring out new colours and you know we make them all pretty and glossy. Cass does an amazing job. Cass is still freaking out we're going to have her on the show and I reckon I've worked out how to do it. <laughs> so she's got no excuse. So this is what we do. So these are the existing ones for example in the flowering gum and then we'll put a real piece of the cloth in so they can see it. But, but so many of you go, Lisa, what have you got in flowering gum that goes with this or with that? So what we are going to do is actually set these up. So if you want to purchase an actual card, you can, so that you've got one handy with you. Just again, so that if you're looking at them on your computer screen, sometimes they all look different. Now we've checked these, that these are true to life colours on this printing, and then you've got a piece of it in the cloth. 
so I'm going to uh, get those all set up so that if you want to purchase one you can um, and have them so we've got these two done and we've got all the Melba fans right now this is coming back to the book cover this is what we did last night and just while I set up so Phil Defada is my favorite 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 patchwork shop in Spain just because why because that's where my bestie my absolute bestie um, Maria is and Sophia and I know what you're saying Lise how how do you have a how did you make a patchwork friend in Spain well Maria and Sophia bring their beautiful online shop from uh, Valencia Pacaña is a suburb a little town village just outside Valencia to Birmingham Festival of Quilts and for those of us stuck here Birmingham is in England uh, UK just in case you've forgotten so um, just being a bit silly there but yeah so uh, they are the stockist of my Melba fabrics and under the Australian Sun in um, Spain and the reason I jumped is I promised Maria a day ago that I would send her photos because she's getting ready for the patchwork shop at uh, the patchwork show I'm going to turn this around in Madrid and we need to get some Summer Palace and some Melba across to her uh, and some of the new Under the Australian Sun quick so she's got them for the show in October okay can you oh it's upside down can you see what I'm doing I'm combining do you like my fluff balls I've so got to keep Miss Ginny away from the box that's why they're actually in a box now not in a bowl um, I'm combining the two patterns because they're both up now so I'm combining the book cover pattern with the the wattle book bag so that we're going to transfer what I did in the stitchery over onto who said UTAS did I say UTAS by mistake oh Stevie you're going to have to watch comments for me someone said UTAS what is that UTAS pattern with the under the trinket box under the trinket box I don't know Mel I don't know what I had under the trinket box now I'm loving the way you say UTAS though the same way that we do instead of under the Australian sun all right so I'm transferring the waddle embroidery onto here in applique so I've cut I had some felt in the cupboard um, speaking of felt Stephen have we got many of those owl kits left I believe two because the, can the girls actually tell what we've got left or not not really well like see the see the number left yes no okay so it is our community duty it would be wrong wouldn't it it'd be a crime not to warn them we've only got a couple of some things left so we've got two our kits we've left. only got two our kits left if you want to get your parliament of owls in woolen felt all right so i found this felt which is only enough for me sorry in the cupboard and i'm using those for the leaves so i'm not going to stitch them out like it was on the pattern so you can see on here they were actually stitched out in back stitch so i've chosen to do them in this felt and then for my flowers oh it was the card oh okay mel yeah got it that uh, it was the card they're really I love the cards it's like a, a collaboration of, of work and it all comes together in one little package you, you would think that I'd feel that way about making a quilt and I do but when the cards are done I don't know there's just something really special because um, I can do the fabric but Cass has to create the magic do you like my pom-pom wattle look at these so I've left little bits on the end so I can sew them through. Now this cover, of course, is much bigger. I need to I need to reveal to you what's underneath. And I've made this in black flannel that I had. Because it's just, I thought with the felt, it was just all nice and furry and, and yummy. Now you're going to want to know how to make these. And that is quite right. I learned how to make these with the gorgeous Kerry. From HQ Benina um, at the Deloraine Craft Fair 
Felicity before I even knew Flick. That's how long ago. That may have been where I met Flick um, when she was down there demonstrating on the bananas. And she was doing this technique with really shiny, fine embroidery thread. So that is one way to do it. And she was using her darning foot on the sewing machine, I'll show you at which step, to secure all of the threads in. Whereas the way I'm going to show you today, you can do it, you can do it all by hand. And I'm hoping I do a better job than I did last night. We had everything that could possibly go weird with no explanation with internet and everything happened yesterday. Um, and I suppose I shouldn't have freaked out too much. I have completely destroyed this skein. It's just criminal what I have done to it. Um, you, it, I shouldn't have freaked out that much because <clears throat> I could have just recorded what we were doing and popped it up later, but I really wanted to do it live last night. Particularly on National Wattle Day and the first of spring. This is divine. I actually bought this at um, the Deloraine Craft Fair. It was homegrown by the lady I bought it off and spun and hand dyed and it is a blend of silk and alpaca. It's, it is literally a complete crime that I haven't knitted it up, that I'm doing something completely different with it. Though when I hold it, oh look at this, when I hold it like this, can you see, see that? I know I've got a banana foot that's got five grooves in it, so I've got four there, I could add one more and use the, um, I think it's stitch number three, four, five. I'll have a look when I get the machine up and do the little stitches across in a zigzag and it will couch it all down. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? Ew. Need to find that foot. Need to find the foot. Hello, Marg. Hello, Diane. Oh, hello, Denise. Hello, Tiki Charlton. Tiki's here from the Gerties. Um, would there be enough leftover fabric to make six? Donna, just be frugal. Be really, really frugal and you will get six out of your kit for your owls. And the way to get more, my owl ended up really fat. He's eaten too many worms. So, and that's the size I've given you. There is no reason why when you get the template, just narrow it down a little bit and it will come out a little bit more. Rob says it looks like a penguin. I don't think it looks like a penguin. But it will come out just a little bit narrower and then you'll be guaranteed to get your six out. Just be frugal. See these? Can you see those okay? These are, for all intents and purposes, I'm told, plumber's washers, plumbing washers. I don't know why, but the nice thing about them is they must go in taps, yeah? It's been a long time since I replaced a washer in a tap. There you go. So you get two of these, Steve. Did I say hardware or Bunnings or something? No. What did I say? But on here they look like O-rings, but they're washers. They're washers. No. So you get two of these and you hold them together. So when, after the show, head out to the shed and see what's in there. You never know. And then we are literally making a pom-pom. How many hours did I spend with my grandmother making pom-poms? Goodness. And then you just wind it round and just slowly rotate as you go. I'm, oh, Lisa. I'm just going to go round as many as I can. It's just a bit. I needed to zoom in a bit more. It's a bit awkward today. Never mind. So you can see I've been quite lazy. I haven't gone one thread at a time. I've got the four and that just means it's going to build up quicker. To show you but you can do this with anything absolutely anything um, from a fine as I said a fine embroidery cotton normal cotton um, see any yarns that you don't have Jenny get Flynn onto this as soon as he's got the motor skills up okay now because this is wool 
Wow, that's a better job than I did last night. Because this is wool, it, it does hold there. It's not going to unravel. But if I was using a shiny embroidery thread, I would uh, probably just, just hit the ends of it with a little dab of glue just to hold it there while we do the next step. And I just need to thread up some cotton. Hi Lisa, who said hi Lisa? So what, Facebook, oh hello Diane. Um, Facebook have been messing, has anyone else noticed that? From a business perspective when we do live shows and check all our Facebook pages, Facebook's been messing with the structure and they've been messing with Instagram as well because they own that too at the moment. So it's been a little rough. Christine Allen's here. Ah, oh, thanks. I don't know how to take that, Pat. In person live better? Yeah, probably. Because I can talk to people. So we realized when we did last night's show, none of the girls in the Northern Hemisphere were watching. It was smack on lunchtime. So we were kind of like, hmm, 17,000 of them, and they didn't watch. They all started watching in the evening. So we're going to do eight o'clock tonight and tomorrow night and then Saturday night we might have a nana nap in the afternoon. We're going to go really late. So we'll probably go about 10 o'clock so that it's, it's a couple more hours into the afternoon in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you don't want to stay up with me that I won't, I won't be offended at all. Rob's laughing because I'm a morning person, not an evening person. So this will be fun, but we'll stay up late. Um, and then yeah you can catch it the next day but we just thought we might just do it a bit later so we'll just have a mess around with it I suggested that we get up and do one at 4.30 in the morning and I could do a live cross feed with Natasha in the UK he just looked at me over his glasses and went eh, no but I'll win that war I will do it with one of them I've got another 13 to do so I'm sure we can sure we can do one Right, so I have knotted up a thread. Now, admittedly, this is a bit thicker. This is my sassy 12 weight, um, but anything that you've got, you, if you want to choose one strand of embroidery thread or just normal cotton, as long as I think as long as the colour matches, you're okay. I've done double and I've knotted it because I have found the best thing to do is to go down near the centre and come up again. And then put my needle through that loop. Just pop that through that loop there. And then I know that that end is secure. And then you're just going to do little back stitches or running stitch around a couple of times around the center where all of the threads cross over and it's going to grab them. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, but it is just a fun thing. So if I had done this on the machine, sorry, if I'd done this with in fine machine embroidery thread I would thread up my machine drop my feed dogs pop my uh, for me a number nine darning foot on and I would just go round and round and round near the center with a matching thread again to secure all of these threads sometimes you might miss a couple but you know you just pull those out it's it's not like doing a traditional one Cindy Tremaine is in the building. Hello, Cindy. How are things in rural New South Wales today? It's pretty hot here, so and it's super, super windy. It is literally full-on bushfire season on the 2nd of spring, so it's a bit scary, particularly when burning off permits have not ceased yet. Uh, and my parents are pyromaniacs of the nicest domestic kind. Um, but yes, I did get to go and see mum and dad yesterday. I did get a permit to go and visit them because I hadn't seen them forever. And um, I'm an only child. And so I was able to get a carer's permit, which was great. And uh, they've got a bit of land. And if you um, ever wanted to know what a scared tree looks like, I know what a, a petrified tree, Steve, is actually a term, isn't it? That have been in water or something. Come on, you'd know this. 
Oh, I haven't learnt it yet. Oh, I haven't learnt it yet. Ha ha ha. Um, a scared tree looks like. It's the one at mum and dad's because if you're in lockdown, there's nothing else to do except trim things, prune things, or chop trees down and burn them. There were a couple more trees missing, definitely. I want to try and give you a close up. Let it focus, focus. Not too bad. If I pop the white behind, it might be a bit easier to see too. There you go. So I've been round and round and round in the middle. And a couple of stitches to secure it off. Um, this is this has got to be up there, doesn't it? With uh, English paper piecing in front of the television. No brainer stuff. Wait, there's good scissors here for this. I know there is. I'll chop this off. So this one is bigger than the ones that I'm popping on my book, but I wanted to do it this big so that you could see it. And I'm pretty sure when I bought all of these washers, they they came in a set of varying, varying sizes all in the ones. So I have gradually been making a heap up. These were originally going to go on a, a jacket for the exhibition, but I'm now thinking I'll just make presents with them and I might make a heap of these book covers up. They are obviously paper scissors. All right. Now, the safe, way, the safe way to do this is slowly. And the risque way to do it, really risque, is to do it with a scalpel blade. But I think doing it with a pair of scissors Oh my goodness, I remember being so little making pom-poms that my grandmother didn't let me do this step. Now, if I had wound this just a little bit looser, like I did last night, I can actually get my scissor blade, there we go, down into the gap between the two washers, and that makes it a lot easier to snip. There we go, and it will loosen up as you're nearly right round to the other side. It's warm and sunny. Oh, I bet it is. I bet it is. Okay. Nearly there. So quick, isn't it? There you go. One fluffy. That was just a couple I'd missed. One fluffy wattle flower pom pom. Pull that one out. Give him a little bit of a haircut. There you go. So, so with these, <laughs> look at this one. Look at the size of that. That's impressive. That belongs on the top of a beanie right there. Um, I've obviously put several layers wound on and the center of that one's right down right down in there but when you look at this as well you can make them more special so I could wind my yarn on and at the same time I could be winding on some um, metallic thread with it or different colors with it so that you get a really really pretty effect that is a big pom-pom it's huge I really can't believe I thought I was going to wear that on a jacket there's another little one. I'll grab one of these. So, and if you have a look at this, oh heavens, Stevo, I unplugged the phone. It was naughty. There we go. Um, if you have a look, you can see these are going to look really cute. So, I'm going to use an embroidery thread, probably this one. It's just slightly paler in colour. Than the leaves and because it's felt and it's not going to fray I'm just going to back stitch down the center of each one which is essentially what we put into the design on the leaves in the book the wattle book cover pattern it's in there and then um, the stems that are on the design here I'll do those in a back stitch and then I'll come through and place these now my flowers are obviously much bigger than the circles that are on the embroidery design but I really don't think 
it's going to matter. It'll just mean that I'll have less. I've also popped in, which you can do when you're sewing the top seam of your book cover, I've popped in a piece of ribbon. And again, because I'm using felt with my leftover felt here, one of these leaves, I will recut another piece and I'm going to pop it um, onto the ribbon down the bottom just so it's appliqued on there. Okay, so I really hope that you... I really hope that you grab one of these patterns and have a go. Um, they are just so much fun. Yvonne Chapman, where is your note if you are late? Really? Just some people. I don't know. Hello, Kathy Lynch. Good to see you too. Now, if you haven't seen the book cover before, he's, all got, he's got a bit fluffy now from the wattle. Um, you can see... <laughs> I had to grab a book really, really quick, a hardcover book that was the size that the size that was the same as my uh, design. I had one, I nearly started working on it and to kind of see I wanted one that would fit. So we ended up quite rightly with an Enid, Enid Blyton. A magic far away tree. So I put the gold inside, I thought that was appropriate. And you can see when I've sewn that top seam, that's where you can pop in your ribbon because that in the center, so it comes right down over the spine. And you've got these little extra bits on the side. Now, in the pattern, it tells you to mark these at three inches um, to fold them over and put them in. So you end up with this size on the edge. What I wanted to say to you is, you can have a play around with the pattern. So when you do your width on the, I still got it in here. Nope, it's over the back. When you actually do your measurements and calculate how big, sorry, how wide your panels need to be with the instructions, if you add an extra two inches, then instead of three, this would be five. And the reason I wanted to say that was, if you actually wanted to make the flaps that go on the inside wider and come back and quite creatively add a pocket for a pen or something in here, then that you would do that at that step, but it is really easy to do. Okay, so I'll pop that back and then the magic faraway tree will have its cover. And I think that there's an, that's the magic faraway tree. There's another one. There's another one of hers the same size. Um, in the bookcase that I will pull out and use with that one. Right, so I'm going to move all this stuff, all of it, all of it, out of the way. Oh, I was going to say when we started today, I was going to try and be a little bit, a little bit, you know, a bit flash and say, we decided um, on a little bit of a VM, POS today, a little bit of Acrim in there. Um, but I didn't get it finished. Oh, you actually can't see the bottom, so that's okay. A little bit of VM, Steve. What's VM stand for? It's not a Holden car model. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> you go, what's, what's a VM? I wonder what a VS is. What's a VM? VM is virtual merchandising. You can actually do a TAFE course now in VM, in virtual merchandising, as in window dressing and in-store displays and... Uh, if you get into it, when you go retail shopping, the next time you can go retail shopping, it kind of, kind of spoils it because you're constantly looking at how they display things. Um, even down to, you know, the milk's always at the back of the supermarket, so you have to walk to the back past everything else. And the things that are on special in the catalogue are at the front to reinforce your confidence you're in the right place. They only put two things there. The other ten sets of Lego are down the back. All that stuff. But anyway, virtual merchandising, display, and POS's point of sale. You know that one. So point of sale has lots of implications. Point of sale software systems include barcodes when you go through the checkout and beep, 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 all your barcodes are scanned. But also point of sale virtual merchandising is display. Let's face it, it's the Mars bar and the pack of chili at the checkout at the supermarket. That was the first major breakthrough in virtual merchandising point of sale. And I bought these beautiful Perspex display units for our shop, didn't I? Which are fake and plain and just don't mean anything at the moment, so I bought it at home. 
But Mark's bag's up. Sorry, what? Is that up? Yep. Yeah. So, um, I was not fossicking, a bit of a tidy up upstairs in the studio at work, getting ready and making room for Eileen Campbell's quilt displays for our Australian textile exhibition, starting under two weeks' time. And I found a box of beautiful stock that I still had of Margaret Upston. So remember, we had all the things on special. I thought we had sold out of the kits for the bag. No, we hadn't. I found six. <laughs> I found six. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but they are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do remember that there was a limit on how many we could do because Margaret had also given us the linen that goes on the back of the bags and that was what limited us. But I've checked today and we do have the linen that goes on the back. So uh, Steve's popped these up as a complete kit. So it comes with the frame, the, 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 the little hinged frame. Ah, you always find stuff, don't you? That serves no purpose in there. It must have just been mine I've brought home in it. So it comes with the frame to sew on with your little hinged flower handle. There you go. You then have in the pack pre-printed onto the linen the actual design of the acacia, which is so important. We should have had it yesterday. That's fine. And all of your threads are in there. So you've got beautiful variegated threads um, you've got contact details for Marg if you need any help. So that's all together and Steve's popped them up and we've got six. You'll need to take those six frames out of our frame stock that's about to go up too. Buddy. Some pretty already up for yourself. Oh, are they the one from the chain? No. Are the others up? I lost track. I need to have a look through. Now the reason that the trivets are in here today, there is a reason I'll take them. Was that the flower tote frame? Yes. Okay. Anti cold. Yes. Are they up? Yeah. Oh, and the silver ones? Um, yeah, all of them are. Oh, so all of the flower tote frames are up as well. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. Can I quickly ask you a question? You may ask a question. Hello, Maxine. Um, how much per meter denim price? Oh. Ah. Oh. Uh, 25 a meter. yes um, Steve's just asking how much the denim is and the denim is this denim that we're popping into this bag so I cut these kits and now this denim is on going on the website right now as well it's $25 a meter it's it is beautiful and it's been purposely stressed if that makes sense and color washed like a good worn pair of jeans, but it's lovely to sew through. Just gorgeous. It's 25 a metre, but it's 54 inches wide, which is 110 centimetres. And how no, that's not right. How many metres do you have? I said that all wrong. Yeah, you said that really wrong. That was really wrong. 54. 54. It's super wide. 2. How many metres have we got? 10. It's 133 centimetres. 133 centimetres, and we have 10. 10. We have 10 metres. Can you put that up in smaller increments or not it much wider? Lie. 25, please. Because it's big. I think we'll get away with that with the software. Can I give all that to you? Okay. Can you just pick up that whole towel? Because we have things to do. I'll keep these. I'll keep this. And was there only a Utah's Chantelaine? Chatelaine. Chatelaine. Yeah, we haven't got Melbourne ones at the moment because I haven't got all the bits and bobs that go in them. Yeah. So the Chatelaine's up too. Oh, it's about to be. It's about to be. It's all happening here. All right. I want to make a tea cosy with you this afternoon. I will be brutally honest. That's also what I, I wanted to make for tonight, but I want to do it with you, please. And um, then we'll do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to change it a little bit. If you all got your bag challenge stuff happening, please. I don't have enough entries yet. If any of you, if someone doesn't put more in at the moment, then then the people that have put one in are so going to win the big fat prizes. I need. You must all be doing it. I need more, 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 please. Anything you've got in the cupboard, 
that's Australian themed in a handbag from a purse up to a big bag. And if you've had them in the exhibition before, that's okay. So Terry, if you're watching, bring the tram one back. Bring, bring anything back that you've had in before so that we've got lots and lots of bags to show off to the world on Facebook. Uh, one of the prizes is actually here because I need to do a little demo for my ladies that have bought one, including Elaine and, oh, and a couple of others, and they're also on sale at the moment. This, this big baby here, I can just sit, oh, you can't quite, maybe I'll go to that camera. I don't think you can quite, I'll have to hold it up for you. This is a magnificent Burnett overlocker. It, it literally... See these two holes here? They automatically thread your lower loopers. You do not have to thread that horrific step. And it comes with all its bits and bobs in here. It's beautiful. I haven't got it on at the moment, but it also comes with its own platform that goes on this side. Two and a half grand. It's worth two and a half grand. Um, and that's one of the, this is one of the prizes. So um, I'm gonna do some sewing on that. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and then there's a Burnett sewing machine embroidery module combo and a thousand dollar gift voucher. You have to be in it to win it. If you've got any questions about dropping off or how to get it to us, just, just email me and uh, edinpo at Chandler's Cottage and we'll, we'll let you know. Okay, this is the, this is the Summer Palace Tea Cozy, Tea Cozy that we did. Um, Steve's popped that up again today as a free download. If you want to make one for yourself but i want to make it a little bit differently with you i want to put a pocket on it so you can put your tea bags in the pocket or your tea strainer or something else just as a little extra gift idea so that's what i want to do oh my goodness it's windy outside super windy so i need to work out which fabrics we're going to use i've actually got three down here I'm thirsty. I wonder why. Oh, four. Mm -hmm. Good. And there's a. Oh, do you want me to open this first? And then you can put them up on the side. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to open a box. Oh, you can have that, Steve. We just, 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 just wanted to get some more liberty in, in the Wiltshire shadow that goes with uh, Melba. Out on the table, mate. Oh, no, it's all right. I've got some Melba here. We'll just check it. It's a very glamorous fabric. It comes in a very unglamorous box. Hello Jill, uh, guess what arrived today? Your bobbin arrived today and did you get my email? Ooh. Oh. I have, I have, I have reasons for all of these. But I want to check these two out. This has a different reason. We'll talk about that another time. But let's get these two out and check. If one of them goes with me, but I'm sure they do. That and there. Whoa. So we've got this already in um, dusky pink and in blue. So that's like, wow, I don't even know, I don't know, if I, I don't even want to say teal, but it probably is. And this is this gorgeous sage green. I've got, I've got a fusions up called parsley. And one called mm, maybe mint, maybe classic mint, and they kind of fall in this category. But you've sort of you've got to have options, don't you? You've got to have options. Let's get a bit of Melba. You know what? If they don't go, I don't really care because they're rather gorgeous. Oh yeah, it, that is it. I'll show you why. Yeah. Okay. So. If you, whenever you're looking at a fabric, just quickly, whenever you're looking at a fabric, 
the thing that's going to pop out at you, and, and Melba's the best example of this, it's the colour of my kitchen wall. It's, it's mostly, t thank you Cassandra. It is the colour of your kitchen wall. <laughs> um, you go, well yeah, it's, it's, this, it, it's this sage colour and pink. But you've got to go through and look for the subtle colours to give you a pop when you're designing something. And to do that, so I always say, go to the Selvage. Go to the Selvage. Okay, so when I do that, this colour here, see that that colour there is going to pop that. That is that exact colour there. So this green here, I have used in the tips of these leaves. So while your eye won't automatically think when you're looking at it now that it's right, when you stand back from a quilt that has been made and you've popped that little bit of colour in, it will bring it up and it will really shine. And you that's when you go, for, everyone will stand back and go, oh, oh wow, I wouldn't have thought of using that. That looks amazing, okay? That's the secret. Now the same with this one. If I lay it across here, that colour there is that. Yum, yum, yum. My mum's trying to read. Can you text Pam and tell her I'm on Facebook, please, Steve? Sure. Thanks. She'll be ringing to tell me she's she's uh, set fire to the property because she's burning off in windy weather. I'm not, I should not say that. That is so not true. Okay. So while this sage here, which is really nice and fresh, is the one that obviously shines through, when I fold this up, that stem through there is this colour and the same I don't even know if it's the bit further down no no that is it because these two down here are what I use for the leaves so if I just give you a better close up on that you see that that comes down into that colour so that is why I really really wanted to add these to the collection with the dusky pink um, so that we've just got more options to play with. I haven't got, yeah, see it's in this one as well. It's that first one I showed you. Yeah, it's in that as well. So, they'll be on the website any minute now. Steve's doing heaps of stuff. The one I gave, these are the ones I gave oh. him. Well, he's busy, but he'll get them there. Oh. Can you, what did we put, Liberties are on 25, aren't they? centimeters so a lot of you have been asking about how do I get fat quarters and everything if you need fat quarters you need to ring the reason is um, it's just maths and it's good business to sell at half meters if we just sell one fat quarter we actually we lose out and I'm going to be perfectly honest about that with you if you do your maths on what a profit from a six dollar fifty fat quarter would be and then you add in the cost of labor and packaging and everything to go with it you, you'll see where I'm coming from but we will be getting a whole heap of pre-cuts up so you can have collections of things in your stash and if there's something you really need you know you can email us or phone us they're seven dollars for 25 centimeters seven dollars for 25 okay but with the it's a different price point with Liberty because it's Liberty so we can do that it's just me trying to be grown up that's all it is. All right, so we've got a tea cozy, and I have my trusty template already cut out, which includes the seam allowance. This one has seen a lot of love, this one, and I actually have brought in the matching coasters, which I had in our point of sale display, uh, and just very cheekily today, because we're doing this, we marked down the Summer Palace trivets. Awesome. The whole lot. Is that what you want? Not just the... So they're all down? Yeah. Ah, oh, all the trivets are down to nine ninety five, And that's fine, Steve. <laughs> no, no, leave it there. And, and even more so because... They can match it with a different type of fabric. They can match it with their Melbourne fabric or their Australian sun fabric or... Ah, leave them all down. We did have them on sale when we were sort of getting ready to move websites so we'll do that again when's that up till midnight Sunday or something again whenever you buy I'm a bit scared about 
our supplier at the moment. Um, they, it's an Australian branch of a company based in Edinburgh. I think they, I think they might be pulling out of manufacturing here. I just get that sense at the moment. Natasha will be all right. I'm a bit worried. So what are we going to do? Put a pocket on. Let's put a pocket on. <coughs> Let's go. I'm going to put you there for a minute. So because I want to show you the board. When you want to mess around with a design like this, what I like to do first of all is work out what's in an unusual shape and that would be for a bag flap or anything a bag panel anything like that I like to have a look at what size piece or square or rectangle this template fits into yeah, probably better over here Ah, oh, thanks Jane that was very nice of you yeah look last night was good fun it was a bit Aussie Aussie the stand wasn't well it still is Aussie Aussie so if I have a look at here on my board that's 10 inches there that's 25 there so if I if I want to play it really safe we'd work with um, a rectangle that's about 15 and a half inches wide Can't see that for love or money, can you on there? I can though. Have you got a sharpie over there, Steve? Or not? No, I'll grab your one. I always say that, don't I? We need to bring some black ones home from work. Oh, I'll pop it on the back of this. What with the scarves? Get rid of the scarf. So we're going to be 15 and a half white. And, um, and look, right now, right now, while you're watching this, if you're on your iPad or your phone or your television, you can go straight to your printer, sorry, straight to your laptop and you can print it out and do it with me because it's there for you as a free pattern. So you can just spit it out. Oh, thanks. Um, where were those Liberty fabrics? The actual fabric fabrics? Yeah. Here. Do you want those? Do you want the bright green one, my leprechaun one? Yeah, all of them. Oh, look at that. That is Christmas right there, buddy. All right, I can write on here now. Across. And then we want to know how tall. Because it's just so much easier to work with a rectangle. So... Mm, 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 mm. I'm feeling a little bit better now. I the most horrible, the most devastating, devastating thing happened. I woke up at about two o'clock this morning, and there's a message from Natasha, and it says, "Good afternoon, Judith. How are things with you today?" Um, there's a message that says, "Was there one box or two?" <clears throat> So we pulled an all-nighter to get all this stuff done to send to Natasha to go on the craft store on the UK TV today and only one box arrived, Steve-o. Oh. Oh, TNT. And um, I've now got an email five days, five days later saying, hey, we've got one of your boxes here and we're really sorry, but we misplaced the paperwork. It's still here. He picked them up together under separate booking numbers. The girls were with me. They were with me. Last week. Do you remember last week I had to run downstairs and let the TNT man in during the show? Oh, that was before I got there. I yeah. remember it was a first Remember that? Yeah. That's because it wasn't Ash. Yeah, that's because it wasn't Ash, who's our family TNT man. All right, we're going to go 11 and a half high. And I just, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really go back to sleep. But um, well, what do you do? And that was really good about it. What do you do? I can't, I can't do anything except probably demand free freight. So she was a champ about it, but oh, oh it was a killer. It's, there's a hundred origami pin cushion kits, girls. All right, so from here to here, 11 and a half. And so what I've done is I've added my half an inch seam allowance. 
It just means we have to send her extra love, extra love this month. Okay. So what are we going to use? I want to use these. Oh, you can't see, can you? There you go. Oh, uh, hey Steve. Sorry. What could I do without you? In the spare room, I will be organised one day. Um, there's a bolt of black magic. Can you grab me a bit? So this, this is what I'm going to use. Now, for our overseas friends who have not seen me do a Suffolk puff Blossom before and you've all seen it a thousand times, the whole idea is, is to put a pocket on the front of the tea cosy to put stuff in. But what I'm going to do is design it so it's got a little spray of flowers looking like it's coming out of the pocket. And so my little cherry blossoms are going to mimic these flowers that are on here. So I thought I'd at least give you the nuts and bolts of this concept and then you can all go off and have a play. And I'll see how far, <laughs> I'll see how far I get um, before eight o'clock tonight. I might get to the point where the tea cozy is made and I'm adding in the flowers. I'm not, I'm not really sure. We shall see. All right. So we're going to need this for the front. We're going to use the black for the top part, the bit that sits behind the pocket. Because um, remember when we did the satchels together and we did the pocket on the front? Same thing. So we want the black behind the pocket so that the flowers that we put on are going to contrast. This is going to be the colour of my blossoms. And in fact, I'll probably use this for the binding around the bottom so it all looks really pretty together. And then I thought this would be really nice, this cream, because it's sort of, it matches all of the, the stripes that are in the blossom. So that's going to be the lining. I just think they do, you know what, they just make the best old fashioned Prezi for people. And the nice thing if it's if you use an oriental fabric then you could pop some lovely little green uh, green tea tea bags into the pocket uh, when you give it away now let's go back to this piece of paper Stephen. i need a bigger bench we've had this conversation just need about another half just another half a meter to the left my left Yes, ma'am. He's count. What are you counting? Oh, how many? Doesn't it say on the bolt how much you've got? Oh, are they full? Yeah. So they're brand new out of the box. Oh, it's just because these two were unwrapped. No, I just unwrapped them. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We need 15 and a half. So how wide do we want our pocket to be? If I, maybe if I turn this this way. Yeah. This is 15 and a half. How wide do we want this pocket? So I want to be able to fit a bit in it, like a, a like a tea bag strainer or something. So oh, I'm glad you like it, Myra and Jill. That is, I'm glad you like it. Um, I can get Steve to tag these for you on the website too, if you would like. I'll, I'll get them to tag them for tonight's show, which he did with two things from last night. I didn't mention it. Sorry, Steve. I think to really make an impact I need it four inches wide because I want my sort of my flowers to come up on little stems out of the pocket so four inches is going to be my pocket so I need to cut it for a strip that is four and a half inches and wide and we already know that it's 15 and a half high so we're going to cut a piece of black that is 15 and a half high and it's going to be four and a half wide. Okay, and that's going to be the piece of black in the middle. So if this is four and the finished width is 15, remember I added in the, the half inch, then that leaves us with nine inches to play with either side. So we're going to put four and a half, half on one side and half on the other. And then remember we need to add a seam allowance. 
So these pieces are going to be five inches wide. And that does not add up. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. What have I done wrong? Four and nine is only 13. Oh, what have I done wrong? Stephen, I can't add 11. Nothing like live Facebook jeepers. <clears throat> Four from 15 is 11, correct? You're looking at me funny. Shut up. We need to cut them six. We need to cut them six. You want another piece of paper because that's all scribbled on? Four. Five and a half. Five and a half. Finished. So we're going to cut six. Four and a half and six. And they are all going to be five and a half high. There you go. Oh, we got there. We got there. We got there. Uh, good afternoon, Donna, or should I say good morning? Top of the morning to you in the UK. I hope you're well and in for a very, very busy day. Um, you're going to have to teeter back and forth between me and um, the craft store today. I'm quite happy with that. So when you when you come to uh, grab some fabric, if if this is eleven and a half wide, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get a couple out of it. And it will be up to it'll just be up to how big, sorry, how wide you want your pieces to be. Um, of course, of course, what you might want to do is make one this size and then have a look at all of your teapots. You might go, well, some of mine are smaller and some of mine are bigger. So you'll be able to scale up and scale down just on a photocopier to change the size. The important thing is the shape. As long as you've got the shape the same, you're fine. They're on. Awesome. Liberties are in the building. As I said, I'm just waiting to get a slightly, just a slightly bigger table. Okay, so everything is 15 and a half inches high. No, 11 inches high. Oh god, I have completely stuffed up. Right, why are you all not telling me I'm doing the wrong thing? Stephen, we should have had lunch. Yeah. We should have had lunch. I forgot about that. Cass, we are not loading this one to YouTube. It is a complete disaster. It's not happening. Felicity, why aren't you telling me off my maths is off? Fresh piece of paper there, Steve, anyway. Yeah. Just, just, just. Take two. You think you can wing it, and you can't. It, it's just not. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm right. Four, five and a half, five and a half. I have to redraw this for you because... I don't want you to do the wrong thing. Eleven and a half high. See this piece of paper? Gone. Six, four and a half, six. Right. The longest time to make a tea cozy in the history of quilting. Trim off your seam, come through and cut at six. I only need two, remember. 
like that for each side on the front. That's going to be those like that. Put that over the top. So you only need two. If you want to cut the same for the back that you can, or you might like your back to be all one piece, which is what I'm going to do. So if I open this out, maybe um, that other table, Steve, is it, is it wider? I mean, deeper as well or not? Maybe we need a deeper one. Then width? Uh, yeah, I mean that way. I think they're the same table. Same. It's not the same. It's big. You're, the one that works bigger. Oh, is it? Mm, it's longer. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is big, but more, more width. Um, yes, Linda, it is okay. You can. It is. I've just given you heaps and heaps in the pattern, so that you can um, quilt yourself silly. Absolutely, quilt yourself silly. So yeah, you can see here, this fits on okay this way, but you can make it a bit, I've, I've just been more generous in the one. But I'm glad you're looking, that tells me you've gone and looked for that pattern and that is brownie points made all on its own. Okay, so that is my piece for the back and then for the front. They are my two pieces that are going to sit either side and I'm going to have my piece of black in the middle. So I'll just cut a piece of black. If you, um, if you have just on the off chance that you haven't seen um, blossoms being made before, if you're not in the applique sampler club, if you're not in a quilter's life, Oh, listen, I have to say a big welcome to our new members as well because some lovely people did join up yesterday, which was lovely, lovely, lovely. So it's just so nice. It's not. It's just so nice when people join. I know that there's a lot of things there already for people to enjoy. So this piece I'm going to cut up four and a half. So the other thing, the other thing, when you're looking at, at really really simple patterns like this which is just a template this is where you do get to have a play and so I'm adding a pocket in but if you've got lots of strips left over from a quilt a bag or anything like that if all of your strips are at least 11 and a half 12 inches high you can just sew them all together and turn them into a um, in, in, you know, treat them as one whole piece of fabric and then cut your template from that. Um, Meigs, are you on that, there's a Facebook group called, is it Zero Waste or something like that? I don't know, I'm not sure if I ended up on their feed or not, but they are doing lots of amazing things along those lines at the moment. People are literally working with what they have in the house. There's a lot of denim being used and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to um, judge if you decide, Lisa, I really don't need to buy denim from you um, because I have an old pair of jeans I'm not going to use anymore. Perfect. I like to like say not use anymore, not fit anymore. Do you like that? Last time I lost stacks and stacks away, it was to get into a pair of jeans that I had bought. Some flash, it's assassin vibe or vibe or whatever. Got starved myself, you know, for six months to get into them. When I actually got into them, I didn't like them. What does that say? I don't know what that means. Just didn't like them anymore. So all of that incentive, and I gave them away. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, check it out, Meg. It's really good. It's really, really good. Oh, I'll send you the link for it. So that is my panel that's going to go in there like that. Quite happy with that, it looks good. So now what I need is my little piece of this fabric that is going to sit up here as a pocket. And this is where your little bit of designing is going to come in because you've got to work out, well, how much do you want sitting up? Do you want a tall pocket? You know, so it comes up, let's have a look. This is the bit I've got left over. So look, you really are going to have 
absolutely zero, zero waste from one strip. So I'm thinking not too tall because I want to be able to have my little bouquet of flowers coming out the top. Oh, so you're in that group too, Mill? Yeah, zero waste sewing. Some of the things, some things are kind of not me. Girls are making complete dresses out of jeans and old jumpers and everything. They're gorgeous and they're quirky. I'm not sure. Everyone's to their own taste. And then there's some that you can see they're recycled. And then there's some things where you just go, no, nah, that's not recycled. I think my favorite, favorite thing so far is someone took their old pair of jeans or their husband's jeans and they turned the bottom of the legs into bottle bags to give us gifts. I thought that was really cool. And they put the pocket, one of the pockets from the back of his jeans <laughs> onto the side to put a card in. Well, that was really cute. Um, I should post up the that orange bag I did for the botanical bag exhibition that I bought at the Parkdale op shop and did up. Okay. There you go. So I think that's about the height for me. How tall is that? So including the seam allowance, if I come down to the raw edge, that would mean it includes my seam allowance and my pocket would come up to about five and a half. I probably want it to be a little bit taller than that. This old rule has got to go, doesn't it? Girls, I've got to get new one. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to bring that up to six and a half. And then it will drop down a little bit because of the seam allowance, but that's fine. So we'll need two pieces for the pocket, one for the front and one for the back. Um, I've got two bits here, but I'll keep one of those. I'm sure I'll make up another one, so I'll pop that aside. So six and a half. And of course they're four and a half wide, yes, so we'll need two that are six and a half tall. better up that way probably up that way so that's that's going to give me my pocket so these will come in a little bit um, once the seam allowance is in I'll pull this out put that over the top so where you're going to go from here you're going to take both of these pieces Okay, and you're going to put them right sides together. You're going to sew across the top. And I'm really confident you can all do this because we've done it before. I know you can do it. You're going to sew across the top here. And then when you've done that, you will turn this right side out. Whoop. Just to show you. So it will, it will be a little bit shorter. But it will essentially be fold it over like that then, like that, okay? So you'll actually have a sewn line across here. If you wanted to add a little bit more drama and interest, instead of doing that fold over, what you can do is leave them out flat, maybe just pop a little bit of iron-on pellet in here to give it a little bit of structure or violin and leave them flat and then grab your contrasting fabric of any kind. It could actually be the lining fabric, you know. Just want to get a little bit of contrast. So either of these and I would cut a little strip from this and use it to bind the top of the pocket. Um, maybe not this one because, no, I'd use the gold. I'd use the cream because I'm going to have the flowers 
in that peach colour. So just so you've got a little bit of interest in a different colour across here. Then what I'm going to do is <clears throat> add some stem detail. Now in this whole story about how we're going to put it all together, when you've got these panels ready, you're going to come through and add some iron-on pellon or some iron-on foam batting or something to give it a bit of grunt. It needs body. Right, so this is this probably has scrap soft and stable inside and I have quilt and I've quilted it. But it doesn't have to be super perky. This is for me because when I when we've got things on display, they've got to stand up. But if you're making a true tea cozy, let's face it, some of them are knitted or crocheted, they don't have to be this perky. So I actually think leftover um, iron on pallon, normal pallon. Um, wool batting. Wool batting of course is going to give you excellent insulation to keep your tea warm. So whatever, you, whatever you've got laying around that's going to help keep your brew good, this you know you can pop in. So once you've got the whole panel together then you're going to be able to pop your batting or whatever you're going to use underneath under this and, and quilt it enough if needed. If you've got an iron on you won't need to but quilt it to um, hold it all together. So with that in mind, when I come through and quilt this, I'm probably, if I'm going to make a few of them for presents this year, and I'm, I think I probably will. Mum's become an expert in buying kitchenware online during COVID, so I know she's gonna be able to tell me where I can pick up some really nice boxed, just plain white teapots to put in with these as presents. I think, um, See with this pattern here, I could just run lines of black or metallic gold down to mimic these lines that are already on the fabric. I could also come down here with my walking foot, which I'd use, and just run a line down each side of the pocket, down these sides. But then also, this is where, instead of doing it, I can do it by hand now if I want to, but if I want to be quick, I can add in my stems with my um, with my quilting and I want this kind of effect so that I've just got some small and large stems coming through like that I have to be a little bit can you see that I don't think you can see it hang on what I have to be careful of Can you see that on the screen, Steve, or not? I'm going to get blind. Can you see that on your screen or not? Mm -hmm. You can see the lines? Yeah. Oh, okay, you can just see them or colour them a bit more. What you need to be careful of is um, not going too close to your, to your seam allowance if you don't want your flowers to overlap. onto your fabric. So if I just do that, there you go, that's a bit better. So then what I'll do is come back and pop one of my little 3D blossoms onto here, onto these. And as I said, you will find those on YouTube. I think Craft and Cook Show number three had pre-shaping and suffix puffs and things on there if you don't already have a pattern of mine or the applique sampler that's got them on it. So this is going to be the colour of my blossoms, just to pick up that whole peachy apricot thing that's in this fabric. What I will do, um, once we've finished up, I'll get Steve to go through and just put a, we used to call them a keyword, didn't we, but a tag um, on these, so that if you want to find the ones that I'm using, they're really easy to find. L-A-H-S. S. L. That will be the tag. I threw that in your face, didn't I? That's the tag. That's because this is Love and Hugs Stitch Along. So Love and Hugs from Australia. So we're using that tag for the next couple of weeks on things that we show in the, in the Love and Hugs show. So we'll pop that on for you. So if we just, let's just go back and lay our 
template over the top. So you can see that's going to sit there and I will be able to centre that over this over the paste panel when I'm finished. So you just see, just lay it over and make sure you've left room to pop your flowers on and you've got enough left at the top and you will have enough at the bottom and I think I definitely am going to bind it in this colour down the bottom. So take all of, please take all of that into consideration because then you know you can do absolutely anything with your leftovers if you've got any blocks maybe even you've done one of those you know gorgeous um art quilt classes i so want to do that at the moment where you pop all your threads and your wool down put the water soluble stuff over the top and then just go nuts and quilt all over the top of it and then wash it if you've got any of those gorgeous arty things sitting in the cupboard Make it into a tea cosy or a bag, please. It belongs out and it needs to be seen and loved um, by everybody. It's very, very important. Uh, Stephen, was there anything else today? Did you need to say anything else to the girls? Please wait, we're working on it. Oh, oh these. These are up now. You put these up? Okay. We had these on. Well, they're very, very classy tea cosy. No one is allowed to then tell anyone else in their respective homes that Lisa said, I'm now making a tea cosy in flash oriental fabric, so I need to go out and buy an Orotaki dinner set. Okay, nice try, but don't blame me. I will not take responsibility. Bit of Arsberg for any of that. Any of that. It's all in the cupboards at the moment, isn't it? It's not being used if you're in lockdown. You need to get it out and use it, folks. Get out the fine china, make yourself a macaron, and have a cup of tea. Alright, so these two. We had these on special a while back. So what, what happened with lockdown was we had things that were on special. Um, and yeah, it is a shame, Petra. I just can't make that happen overnight, mate. Let me see what I can do. If you I don't think I, actually, you know what? It's not far off, Petra. I'll show you in a minute. If we had all these things that we had on special and on sale that we ran through the live shows and then we had them on special in the shop and then what happens is lockdown happens and we sort of we lose our ability or our avenue to show you things or to give you things on sale and the old website was very cumbersome to upload things now Stephen's got the whole thing under control and any day now he's going to show me how to do it I think and um, no, there's other things I need to learn first. It's my phone, so I need to learn first. But now we are set up. So he's popped up these two. Um, under Benetics would be the yep. best way to find them. Other beautiful fabrics and Benetics. Yeah, so under other beautiful fabrics and then under the brand Benetix. These two are up with the stock we've got left. They, they're just, they are just beautiful and they're um, luminous and I would also say these new cameras and these lights just help us show them off a little bit better. See how the leaves shade from dark to light? Every single one of them does a little bit of a trip, just gorgeous. So that's the green on black with little metallic dots. And then we've got a red one. Look at that. And these all shade within them as well. So there's not a lot of them. Um, I've waited until Steve's got super fast at uploading before I would ask him to upload something that we've only got three or four metres of each of. But they're, how much are they each? 15? 12? 15 a metre. 15 a metre instead of 26. There we go. So Jill says we always have to make a matching mat. Really? Do we? Okay. But um, I just wanted to. It's not. It's not bad, Petra. It's really not. It's not too bad. Of course, um, I would sell you this fabric to make one if we hadn't have sold out of it, which is the Summer Palace um, in the black and red. We've still got the. We've still got a little bit of the ivory left. But not a lot. There we go. Why is someone trying to ring me constantly? 
I will get back to them in a minute. There we go. So this is, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's that pinky color, but I'd be quite happy to sit down with that. With that. I think it'd be all right. All right. I am going to um, love and leave you now because I have to get ready for tonight. I have to make dinner, do all those sorts of things and uh, pop back to the warehouse and get a little bit more done for the day. You're going back, aren't you, Steve? Yep. Oh, Steve's going back. Everyone that places an order before, let's say... Oh, there's a deadline? Five o'clock. I'll, uh, I'll pack up tonight for them. Oh, so if you place your order before five, it will go out tonight. tonight. Um, do we, so do we need to tell the girls about what's happening with Australia Post? No, because it doesn't affect us. Oh, no, but it's big. Yeah. So we, as a business partner with Australia Post, I have to say it right in case our business partner manager's watching. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. <laughs> um, they are so busy at the moment that they are closing down pickups from e-parcel businesses. From e-parcel businesses for two days. We're not quite sure if they're shutting down oh, picking sorry, up four days. Four, da four days. Um, this means that when you have a big business and mail order and they all travel around. Yeah, I'll see you tonight, Sharon. And you all travel around and pick up from all the businesses. We're not sure if that means from letterboxes as well, though, do we? I'll just... Oh, no, well, I'll, take it, I'll take it to the... We're, we're right. not sure what it means if they're going to stop picking up from the big red boxes or no, not. No, they can't. They can't. Okay. But it's going to slow your deliveries down, but not for us. So if you have ordered things... From other people that use Australia Post, you might find you've got a little bit of a delay if they are big companies for four days. They're literally shutting down, picking up from businesses for four days. And that's a combination, as I think I said to you about, um, there being a strike last week and a lot of people moving their business over to Australia Post. And then there are distribution centres throughout ACT, New South Wales and Victoria. They're in a little bit of trouble having to have deep clean, they had deep cleans and things with COVID. So they're now behind. So they've just gone, guys, we're just going to stop for four days and catch up. They don't even do that at Christmas. So they must just be so, so inundated and they're on limited staff. But we're good. Um, we're good. Recommend choosing Express when checking out. All right. So, so we just think things are going to be a bit slow too. So if you mm -hmm. don't mind the extra couple of dollars for Express, you've now got that um, ability to do that. Can I borrow the, your phone to call that number back? Because that's actually a delivery driver. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, take my phone and call it back. Um, so, yeah, so if you if you really, really want some in the hurry, we do expect things, though, to slow down a little bit for next week. So just choose the Express Post because Express Post is super fine. So I've dribbled on enough now, haven't I? Okay, as I said, I um, will see you tonight if you're in love and hugs. If you're not in love and hugs and you don't want to be, don't worry about it. Cass and I will actually pull down... Um, the live feed from tonight in love and hugs which we can do and we will pop it up on my youtube channel for you okay enjoy the rest of your day thank you for joining us and um i will see you if not sooner tuesday next week at 2 p.m all right bye 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 did you get him no he's on the phone